has officially been two months since I got my LASIK eye surgery. I can see clearly now, life is beautiful, things are great, I wish I did this sooner. In today's video, I'm going to go over what my LASIK eye surgery experience was like, how I felt going into the surgery, what it smelled like during the surgery, my anxiety levels prior to the surgery, cause Lord knows those were high. How much did it cost? Like how much do you need to save up to get your eyes lasered? As always in my videos, there are timestamps and chapters below, so feel free to skim through a certain section or review a certain section if you would like. The first thing I just wanna start off with is my vision and my script prior to getting LASIK eye surgery. So I don't wanna ever say that I had bad eyes, like I didn't particularly have bad vision. My issue is that I had an astigmatism in both of my eyes and that caused me to strain my eyes a lot more than the average person might need to. I never actually needed glasses at all either up until I was pregnant, so about like 2014, or at least that was the first time I recognized how well I could see with glasses after getting an eye exam done. Throughout the years, my eyes have just progressively gotten worse as well since I had my initial prescription. And glasses are expensive. They're really expensive, especially if you want some type of designer, but I've always just dealt with it. I pay the price every year to go and get my eye exam done, and then I pay for these nice shiny new pair of glasses that will be scratched within hours of me having them. Misplaced, broken, something is gonna go wrong with them. Since the beginning of my nursing career specifically, I had many, many, many of my colleagues kind of tell me how life-changing LASIK eye surgery was, and I never thought that my eyes were like that bad that I could benefit from getting LASIK eye surgery. But I would get incredibly frustrated at work, especially doing procedures where I needed to have a surgical mask on. And this is prior to the pandemic, prior to before everyone knew what PPE was and like all this is like my regular job, like my nursing job. I would have these surgical masks on and my glasses would get foggy from how heavy I was breathing or I'd have to wear protective goggles on top of my glasses and things would get even more foggy and hazy because it's like a plastic that goes on top. The worst patient experience I've ever had involving my glasses was when a code blue was called. I was on top of a patient doing chest compressions and my glasses actually fell off onto the patient. But nonetheless, my glasses have always kind of been an issue. Just the amount of times you would have to touch your face to like fix your glasses. I'd really get a lot of acne like right here. Didn't matter how many times I cleaned my glasses, I'd always sanitize them down, especially after a shift at the hospital. Glasses were just starting to be like the bane of my existence. And then with our new friendly virus coming around in 2020, we had to wear masks all the time, all the time. Protective eye shields all the time fine. Like I was getting like these pains behind my ear, not only from the mask, but the glasses like rubbing on there. So it was giving me headaches. It was just too much. The one thing that always prevented me from going completely forward with this was one that I didn't think I had necessarily quote unquote bad eyes. And the second thing was cost. Like how much does LASIK eye surgery cost? I've always had the impression that LASIK eye surgery would be extremely expensive. Each individual person I kind of asked about their experience and the cost of it all quoted around $4,000. So that's just what I had in my head, $4,000. I finally go ahead and get the consult done with this doctor who comes highly recommended in my area, who all these nurses have gone to, $5,000. So about $1,000 more than I had anticipated it to be. And literally, five minutes before I went into my surgery. Like I'm talking like I'm sitting in the chair pre-op, I've got my surgical hat on, I've got my booties on, eye drops are in, they're dilated, I can't see anything at this point, everything's all blurry. I said to her, hey, can we lower that price? She ended up lowering the price from 5,000 to 4,400. Prices are not always set in stone. So as long as you're comfortable with a reputable healthcare provider doing whatever procedure it is that they're doing to you, it doesn't mean that someone's gonna do a less of a job. They shouldn't be. Talk to them about prices if you care to. But the one thing to note is that you should never, ever, ever, ever skimp out on things that have to go in your body or things that are being cut into your body. Don't take the cheap route out. Like if she had told me 6,000, I would have saved up the extra two grand and then went and got my surgery. Like your body is not something to play around with. Your health is not something to play around with. Your vision, you're so lucky and blessed to have eyes to see that that's not something I feel like you should ever try and cheap out on. Really do your research on the surgeon, the facility that you're going to. 
My biggest fear and I think what hindered me from getting LASIK eye surgery for so long is going blind. Like I think that's the worst possible outcome that you can get from the surgery is going blind. So generally with elective surgeries and LASIK eye surgery is an elective surgery because it's not something that's inhibiting your health at all. It's not something that you're required to do. It's you choosing to go into this surgery, understanding the risks that can come with it. Nothing's ever 100%. You can't ever guarantee 100%, especially when it comes to surgeries. So I've always had this like idea in my head that I'm going to be that 0.00 zero zero one percent of a, the population who goes into the surgery and something drastically terrible goes wrong but that's also just like where my mind goes for everything i even got to the point with this fear where i was almost contemplating like hey can i go in for surgery to do one eye let's see how it heals and then come back and do the other eye i recognize that i go a little bit above and beyond the average person i've got to work on that dry eyes was something that was a huge complaint from a lot of people halo vision and nighttime driving was a huge issue for a lot of people that get lasik eye surgery that was a huge fear of mine too are my eyes going to be so dry that it's unbearable that i'm not going to be able to like function afterwards because there are definitely cases where people have incredibly dry eyes and it almost hinders them and decreases their quality of life afterwards and then the other thing too is what if i needed a repeat surgery what if something went wrong during the surgery because when you're doing any type of elective surgery there's always risk for doing something and a, and a benefit for doing something and you just need to ultimately weigh out in your life is it worth the risk for you to take to possibly have a better outcome in your quality of life afterwards I ended up doing a virtual consult just because of pandemic going on right now and it was kind of like a pre-consult where I had a virtual call with an obstetrician oh, not an obstetrician <laughs> not given birth here i had a virtual call with an optometrist and she kind of basically went over my script she asked me a few questions just basically to see if i would be a candidate for lasik eye surgery and then we got to the point where i had my actual consult and surgery kind of day of within like hours of each other so day of surgery march 25th i went in we did a whole bunch of different eye exams everything looked good we decided that day as well like am i a candidate for prk or lasik eye surgery now those are two different surgeries if you want to do some more research on what prk is that's more about refracting the light as opposed to laser eye surgery where it's shaping the cornea of your eyes I get a chance to meet with the surgeon, very great guy. He seems very comfortable with his practice, with his facility, what he's doing, which brings me so much more ease. We do a million and one eye drops. We've got to dilate the eyes. They need to do numbing eye drops at the same time. So you're kind of getting eye drops every couple minutes. Yes, you can taste them. The only problem I had with this entire experience is that the Ativan was not given to me early enough. So as a nurse, I know that certain medications need to be given ahead of time just so you can get the full peak effect of when it will work best for that patient. Sublingual Ativan or any type of those benzodiazepines that you would use to calm down um, anxiety, especially prior to a surgery, should be given anywhere from 20 to 30 minutes prior to whatever procedure you're doing because that's how long it takes to kick in. I was given that medication eight minutes tops before I went into this surgery. I knew it wasn't gonna work for me right away because of how high my personal anxiety levels are. It very much differs for every single patient. 0.5 milligrams is usually the dose that you would get before that. So I had crazy, crazy, crazy high anxiety levels as I'm lying down on the table, looking up at the laser, and he's just telling me, focus in on the green light. So it's kind of a two-part surgery. The first part of the surgery is where the flap of the cornea needs to be lifted. The second part of the surgery is at the actual laser process, and then the flap of the cornea gets put back down, and then you're kind of like on your way. So I'm looking up at the screen light. I can see things kind of coming towards my eye but not a hundred percent clear on what they are first thing i can see coming towards me is the forceps for your eyelid and i have like this weird fear about that from like horror movies from like keeping your eyes plastered open like it, it was just weird to me i'm thinking it's actually going to hurt a lot it doesn't my eyes basically open with the force up now but he's also just like placed a piece of tape over it the tape is not touching my eyelashes or like my eyeball or anything like it's a, a little bump like it's enough to just keep it covered from debris this little clear tool right now that is on the eye kind of suctions onto your eye and there's a little bit of pressure that is applied it kind of just feels like someone's sticking their thumb onto your eye and then that circular piece that's coming down is a precision cutter or laser basically and it cuts the flap into your eye and then the suction comes off and the procedure can 
continue. So he's taped the one eye. He tells me stare up at the green light for the other eye and just keep focusing on the green light. And he said, it's gonna count to five and we're just gonna make the flap. The laser comes over five seconds and done. Then he goes over to my right eye and at this point we're starting with the actual flap being lifted since this eye is the one that's already uncovered. So the tool that I seen coming towards me looked like a sharp object. I just see a blade kind of coming towards my eye. It's not a blade. So this is the flap that's been created. This little piece is kind of gonna go slip directly under and then lift it so he can like peel the corneal flap back. And I start wanting to like flinch, like keep in mind as well, my Ativan has not kicked in because it was not given to me within enough time for it to take full effect. So I just have clenched fists lying there on the steel table, staring up at this green light with all the white surgical lights around. And I see this scalpel like thing come towards my eye. I start panicking a little bit, but also trying to keep in mind that I'm not supposed to be moving my eyes in a bunch of different directions. I need to keep focusing on the one light. He lifts up the flap. And when he lifted the flap, it kind of, looked like I was underwater. Like it just looked 10 times more blurry than it already was. The laser goes across and he counts down. He said the laser's gonna be on for 10 seconds and they count down. I had the impression that you could smell burning eyeballs. Some people you can actually smell like the flesh, uh, not the flesh, I shouldn't say that, it sounds really gruesome. But you can smell the eyeball kind of burning as the laser goes through. The worst that it should smell like is like burnt hair kind of. Like if you've ever straightened your hair and you've burnt your hair, that's the worst that it should smell like. It's not like anything terrible. And it doesn't mean that something's going wrong either. I fortunately didn't have a scent with my eyes being burned at all. They finished and he lowers the flap back down because once that corneal flap is attached, attached back to the eye, the healing process will start and the cells need to start fusing together. But if it's kind of like, say that if we lifted it up this way and it was put down kind of like off to the side, like that's how the flap will heal and you'll kind of get like a little ripple, which is what they actually look for in your 24 hour follow up. I can see at this point a little bit, not like clear vision, but back to what it was when my eyes were just dilated. And I can see a tool coming towards my eye. It's very, very blurry. It's kind of like a paintbrush. A lot of people describe it as a paintbrush. It has like a lubricating fluid on it and it's kind of just to help smooth out any of the bubbles that would be in the corneal flap, if any, and just kind of smooth out the surface. He puts the tape back on that eye, moves over to this, the next eye, same process as happened. I want to say at this point by like the time he was finishing up with the second eye, like after he was counting down that 10 seconds, was I feel like when my Ativan finally kicked in. Like it was such a quick bam, 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 done. My Ativan didn't kick in until the 20 minute mark after the surgery was pretty much nearly done. And then I was like calm after that. But at the same time, the surgery was done. So it didn't necessarily do the job that it was supposed to. And you can't feel any of it either. I want to say that as well. It was the weirdest feeling ever to not feel. Like I can see things definitely touching my eyeball, but I'm not feeling any of it. It was just crazy, it was weird. The one thing that kept happening though with my left eye specifically when he was finishing up is when he was trying to do that like paintbrush thing, his glove kept like grazing the side of my face here and your eyeball is numb but the peri area like around your eye is not numb obviously so I could still feel anything there and so anytime his brush would like graze the side of my face I would like flinch so the surgery's done at this point the nurse tells me I can sit up off of the surgical table I sit up and she tells me I can walk over a couple feet over to the table where the surgeon is sitting ready to take a closer look at my eye and I was kind of confused for a second because I was like wait can I open my eyes like am I am I allowed to keep them open am I actually gonna be able to see you could see it's just blurry like I have a general idea where I was going it was just blurry he looks at my eyes for a couple seconds everything checks out looks good I'm dismissed from the surgical room I go wait in the post-op room we do a couple more checks with the nurse we do a set of vitals everything looks good and pretty much like I don't know half an hour tops she said you can leave your partner is waiting for you outside and we'll drive you home and go to sleep and that that was that Ativan had definitely kicked in by that point like like I said this entire process was so quick 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 and if you actually want to look at more footage I had from day two post-op all the way up into day 14 post-op right with my eyes healing how they were looking they were looking scary at one point one of the things that I didn't know about 
going into the surgery because not many people talked about it was how frequent your eye drops are going to be put in after you get the surgery. So with the script I was given anyways, I was given two medications, one prednisone to bring down inflammation and one antibiotic to help with any preventative like infection that could happen post-op. Prednisone within the first 24 hours has to be given, for my script anyways, had to be given every two hours. So one thing that I wish I had known about kind of prior was like, how much sleep I needed to get, but then also I'm not getting sleep because I needed to wake up every two hours to get the eye drops. So luckily I had my boyfriend with me and he was able to help me through that entire thing because I refused to open my eyes unless it was for eye drops. So he was taking care of all of that for me, for sure within the first 24 hours. After that, you're kind of good. I did the 24 hour follow-up. I ended up having a small ripple in the left eye in the corner like right where the flap the top of the flap was created it's out of my sight of vision it's not a cause for concern so nothing was ever done about it in fact if i actually went back to correct the issue it could have done more damage long term that was kind of just left alone in terms of side effects or any of the fears that i had one thing that has mainly stuck with me that is kind of an issue but not really is the nighttime vision i'm still adjusting to and this also could just be my eyes healing for within the first six months i think that's a possibility that it could go away but i see like kind of like a halo vision around lights or kind of like starburst the lights are a lot bigger than what i'm used to in the nighttime and so that can definitely kind of feel like a distraction a little bit when i'm driving during the night fortunately my province here in Canada has been locked down for I don't know how many months at this point, so there's not much driving I'm doing anywhere. Hopefully it goes away. It was a huge kind of leap on the scale there from having everything very much focus in for lights as best possible that they could have been with my script to not having any glasses at all, but then also the bright right in your face. In terms of dryness for my eyes, I think I really only experienced bad dryness with my eyes in the first month or so. The dryness in my eyes, I think I also contributed a lot to just with my lifestyle of being on the computer so much. If I wasn't on the computer so much, having my eyes focus in on one spot, not blinking, zombie like on the computer i don't think my eyes would have dried out as much or strained as much what i've done is i just bought like lubricating eye drops that you can buy from like any drugstore over the counter and i just use those every couple hours if i feel like i'm straining my eyes too much or i'm looking at the computer too much the other thing too is i'm not getting nearly as many headaches as i used to before because i felt like my glasses always gave me headaches whether they were just too tight on my face and i haven't had nearly as many headaches and i'm very very grateful for that the light sensitivity was the worst i think within the first like week and a half not anything too crazy i'm a very strong believer of protecting your eyes as it is already so if you're going out driving and it's a sunny day wear sunglasses if you're out in the winter and there's snow outside light reflecting off the snow wear some sunglasses in the pool light reflecting off the water wear some sunglasses but i consciously made an effort to keep all the blinds closed in my house i think for the first 72 hours 48 hours i might have been being a bit excessive i just didn't want any light bothering me at all because it it felt like my eyes were kind of just straining it's a fresh cut it's an open wound on your eyeball that needs to heal so don't push yourself too much don't strain yourself too much so that is where i am today two months after getting my lasik eye surgery i have no regrets at all this is one of the best things i think i have done for myself in my adult life i am thriving at work wearing my protective eye shields not having to worry about glasses not having to worry about the constant struggle of doing contacts in and out having them dry out in my eye poking my eye a bunch of times pain behind my ear from the glasses you know what life is just good that i can see i wake up and i can see I can see every single day, especially in the first like two weeks, I want to say when I would wake up in the morning, I felt like my eyesight was just going to be taken away from me. I looked at everything with such awe and amazement. Everything is beautiful. I can see colors more vibrantly. I could just be telling myself that I see shapes more clearly. That's definitely true. My stigmatism is gone. I just, I'm so much overall happier than I was before getting the surgery and I would 10 out of 10 recommend this to anybody who has the finances or the opportunity to get LASIK eye surgery that I don't regret this at all I am so happy that I got it done it is like a whole new world for me overall the experience was just very very good and I wouldn't change my eyesight for anything in the world. I'm very, very grateful. That is it for this video. Like I said, if you would like to check out the other two vlogs where I have post-op day 24 and day two through 14, go and check those out. My eyes were quite the sight to see. So 
Thank you so much for watching and I will catch you guys in the next one. Bye. Bye. <laughs>